Hi, my name is Tom Brass. I'm a CLA for St. Bernard Engineering up here in Minnesota. And today I'm going to show you how I completed the Certified Lab U Developer Test in less than three hours. The time is 3.13 p.m. For the CLD exam, you are required to create an application in four hours based on the provided spec. I'll work through one of the practice exams to demonstrate how I was able to complete the exam in less than three hours. The exam I will complete today is the ATM Machine Simulation. The first thing I'll do is create the design template. I'll start by creating a new VI from the Consumer Producer template in LabVIEW. Using the built-in templates is a great way to save time. I use a variation of the Consumer Producer loop on a regular basis, and that's what I'm showing you today. A key point is that I'm going into the exam with a plan, using the design I know well. The first thing I'm going to do is create the user interface. I skipped that in the video since it's not very interesting to watch and you'll be provided the user interface in the actual test. Now I will start working on the block diagram. I'll start by creating the data structures I will use to pass data between the loops. Each structure is a cluster of a command and a variant. The variant will hold any data associated with each command. Another time-saving tip. If you need to create a constant, such as a variant, but you don't remember where it is, just grab something that uses that data type as an input, right click on it and create a constant. Then just delete the function and keep the constant. Once I've created a cluster, I'll right click on it and turn it into a type definition. Then I'll save it. It's good practice to use enumerated types and save them as type defs. This minimizes typing errors compared to using strings, and if you save it as a type def, you can easily add to it later on without having to search every place where you use it just to add or change one of the items on the list. I'll also turn the command enumerated type into a type definition as well, since I'll be using it in several places as a constant. After saving everything, I'll replace the Q input with my new structure. Then I'll set up the consumer loop to handle the new data type, and I'll set up the exit case so that you can stop the VI. This is an easy first step to test your design with, and then as you add new features, you can test them right away since you've already got the design set up to exit gracefully. While I am wiring up the control loop, I should mention that while I am creating this template, I am thinking about where I'll add the functionality. In this case, I'll be creating the ATM machine simulation, so the functionality for depositing, withdrawing, etc. will go into the control loop.
Next I'll create a display loop to handle updating the front panel. It's basically a duplication of the consumer loop in terms of its structure. I'll open up the consumer loop data type and make a copy of both the command type def and the consumer cluster type def. I'll also add one of the commands that I know I'll need, which is update messages. This will update the message display on the front panel. Then I make sure to replace the consumer command type def in the display cluster with the new display command type def. I mentioned earlier about how I'm thinking about where different functions will go. One of the functions of the display loop will be to enable and disable controls. I'll set it up so that I just have to send the state to the display loop, and it will figure out which controls to enable or disable. I'll show how I accomplish this toward the end of this video. After that, I'll wire up all the references, making sure to close the references at the end of the application. Also, I'll add an error handler so I know if there are any errors after running the application. You might notice that I use the automatic tool selection. I found this to be a little time saver. But if you're not used to it, you probably shouldn't be trying it out during the test. One thing I would recommend to save time, however, is to copy and paste whenever you can. If the function you need is already on the block diagram, you can make another copy by holding down the control key while you click on the function. Then drag it to where you want to make this copy. Another little time saver is that you can replace tunnels with shift registers by right clicking on the tunnel and selecting replace with shift register. I'll need to handle exiting the display loop as well, so I'll add the exit command to the exit case of the consumer loop. The consumer loop will send the exit command to the display loop when it's exiting its own loop. Another thing worth noting is that I try to clean up the wires as I go. This keeps the code clean and easy to read, and I don't have to go back later and clean everything up. You're less likely to make wiring mistakes this way. I'll also add error handlers to each of the loops so that I'll know if there are any errors while running the application.
Now that my basic design pattern is set up, I'll run it to make sure it exits properly. The time is now 3.29 p.m. I'll finish up the application and come back when it's complete. I've now completed the ATM practice exam. It's 6.11 p.m., so it's just under three hours. First, I'll start by running the application to demonstrate that it has all the required functionality. I can insert a card, enter in an account number, check the balance, withdraw money, and deposit money. I can't withdraw more than what's in the account, and so on. I'll exit the application and show the block diagram. The top loop handles all the user interface events and sends the corresponding commands to the control loop. One of the requirements is that no activity for 10 seconds exits the application. This is handled in the top loop as well. The bottom loop handles updating the display, including enabling and disabling the controls. I use a simple numbering scheme to represent the different states. The middle loop, which is the control loop, contains most of the functionality of the application. There is a simulate card sub-VI to simulate inserting and withdrawing the ATM card. Notice how I update the screen by putting commands onto the display loop. All of the user input functionality is in the user input sub-VI. This includes entering an account number, entering an amount to deposit, and entering an amount to withdraw. A simple comparison determines if there's enough funds to withdraw. The deposit is similar to the withdrawal, but without the comparison. Checking an account number is simply searching the area of accounts from the file and updating the screen appropriately. The file module is mainly parsing the string read from the file to determine account numbers or to read the balance. Depositing is just adding to the total and writing the data back to the file. And withdrawing is just subtracting from the total and writing the data back to the file. When selecting the menu button, the application figures out which button was pushed by checking for the true button, then matching it up with the name of the menu. The right and left button cases are nearly identical, with the only difference being which column to use from the menu list. The actual functionality is handled in the menu selection sub VI. To terminate the application, a user event is used. This duplicates the functionality of pressing the card simulator button on the front panel. Thus, both exit the application the same. Most of the functions consist of updating the front panel and enabling and disabling controls. Also, I keep track of the state, such as where I am withdrawing or depositing, with an enumerated type. Fast cash is set up similar to a regular withdrawal, except the operator doesn't have to enter any amount on the front panel, and $50 is automatically selected. The various messages and menus are listed on the front panel, and the correct message is chosen for display when withdrawing, depositing, etc. By keeping all the messages on the front panel, it makes it easy to update in the future. The messages could be read from a file or database in the future. That about wraps it up. I'll show a few more cases while I leave you with a couple more tips. The main one is leave yourself a good 15 minutes at the end to document your code, and to write down anything you didn't understand or that you wanted to clarify. Even if you don't finish the application, writing down how you would have finished it can score you some more points, and some people have passed the test this way. Another tip is not to get bogged down by trying to perfect the code. You may get docked a point or two if your wires are not perfect, or if some of the controls are not lined up, but not finishing the application will cost you more points. Do a good job, but this is for an exam, not to deliver to a client. I hope this demo helps you a little bit. Good luck with your exam.